Legend of Faust is about a deal with the devil. It has gone on to inspire countless works that have had a colossal impact on literature. Goethe's Faust, in particular, was a significant influence on The Magic Mountain and Dr. Faustus by Thomas Mann and The Master and Margarita by Mikhail Bulgakov. This widespread influence is proof that Faust touches on something essentially human. We first encounter Faust in his study. He's frustrated and dissatisfied with human knowledge. I have pursued, alas, philosophy, jurisprudence, and medicine, and help me God theology, with fervent zeal through thick and thin, and here poor fool, I stand once more, no wiser than I was before. Faust's concerns reflect the attitude that the so-called Enlightenment hadn't sufficiently illuminated the truth. This perspective is similar to the critiques of knowledge found in postmodern philosophy. And also like postmodernism, Goethe's Faust explores fantastical depictions of the difference between signs and the things they signify. For example, Faust resorts to magic after his monologue lamenting the limits of knowledge, and he does so by summoning two spirits from symbols and books. In vain to hope reflection dry could make the sacred tokens clear. You spirits who float nearby, give me an answer if you hear. The spirits that emerge from these symbols might represent transcendent knowledge, or knowledge of the thing itself, or direct experience beyond the limits of knowledge that Faust yearns for. In one of my favorite passages, Faust describes his human impression of transcendence, where he would have wings so that he could fly after the sun so that it would never set, eternally illuminating the earth beneath him. O oh, lucky who can still aspire to surface from the sea of aberration. What we know not of that our need is dire, and what we know lacks application. However, this bright hour's fair benison, let such low spirits not embitter. Observe how in the flaming evening sun those green embowered cabins glitter. He yields and sinks, the day is lived and done. He hastes beyond, new life to breed and nourish. Oh, that I have no buoyant wings to flourish, to strive and follow on and on. I'd see in endless vesper rays the silent world beneath me glowing, the valleys all appeased, each hill ablaze, the silver brooks to golden rivers flowing. No more would then this rugged bluff deny with cliff and precipice the godlike motion. Already with its sun-warmed bays the ocean reveals itself to the astonished eye. At last it seems the god is downward sinking, yet to new urge awakes the mind. I hasten on, his ceaseless radiance drinking, the day ahead of me, night left behind, the waves below and overhead the sky. A happy fancy, meanwhile he must pass, to spirit wings will scarce be joined, alas, corporeal wings wherewith to fly. Yet it is innate in us all. That feeling ever upward forward presses when lost above in heaven's azure spaces. The skylark trills his jubilant call. When over craggy fur-clad highlands on outspread wings the eagle rides. And striving over plains and islands, the crane toward his homeland glides. Faust's adventure begins when the devil, or Mephistopheles, is introduced in the form of a dog that follows him home. After Mephistopheles' magical transformation, Faust realizes that he has a supernatural being and he doesn't want to let him leave. But Mephistopheles makes a clever escape and returns to lay out the terms of the famous Faustian bargain. If Mephistopheles can provide Faust with an experience that's satisfying to the point that he would live in it forever, then he will die in that moment and serve Mephistopheles for eternity in the afterlife. But as Mitch Horowitz writes in his book, Modern Occultism, the two do a kind of intellectual dance around one another, with Faust skeptical that Mephistopheles will deliver the happiness, knowledge, and fulfillment he promises. My favorite of the experiences that Mephistopheles shows Faust takes place on Walpurgis night, the feast day of St. Walpurga, who German Christians would pray to as a defense against witchcraft. 
As Mephistopheles and Faust scale a mountain to attend the night's festivities, they are bombarded by wind by a mass of witches who fly above them. They follow a will-o'-the-wisp, also known as a jack-o'-lantern, a ghostly light from European folklore that lures travelers into bogs, but also represents an unattainable goal. It's on Walpurgis night that Faust gets another glimpse into the transcendence he desires. Here it seems we pass the gateway into magic dreams and mazes. Guide us well and earn our praises. Speed us on our courses straight away through the vast deserted spaces. Tell me, someone, are we halting or advancing? All is vaulting. All revolves and swirls and races. Crags and trees distorted faces. And the jack-o'-lanterns floating, breeding as they spin and bloating. Hold my coattail, clutch it tight. Here we reach a middling height, whence you glimpse a sight astounding, Maimon glistening through the mountain. Maimon is a biblical term that refers to wealth. How strangely in the veil it glimmers, as of a lurid sunrise sheen, and probes with summer lightning shimmers the deepest clefts of the ravine. There vapor wells in billows sweeping, there mist and haze with embers glow. Now like the finest webwork seeping, now breaking forth in bubbling flow. Here it will thread in disalignment, downhill a hundred veins of light, and cornered there in close confinement, all of a sudden reunite. In making a deal with the devil, Faust encounters a witch with talking marmosets, falls in love with Gretchen, and slays her brother in public. But transcendence remains out of reach for him at the end of part one, and you'll have to read part two to see how it ends, differently from other iterations of the Faust legend. The themes and imagery in Faust remind me of a skit that I saw at camp as a kid, where passers-by join someone who's looking for their keys until someone asks, where did you last see them? The person who lost the keys points far into the distance. And they ask him, well, why are we looking over here? To which he responds, this is where the light is. Goethe's Faust encourages us to search in the dark, 